Welcome everyone. I'm Lisa D'Amico, the curator of Childhood Unmuted, hosted by the Cultural Alliance of Western Connecticut. And tonight I'm speaking with Gary Schwartz. Hi, Gary. Hi there. Gary, your piece contemplating Vermeer, that is like an epic novel in one image. Oh, how nice. Thank you. Um, I want to know a couple things. I want to know the inspiration behind it. I want to know who those people are, not the Vermeer, you know, the modern day people mm -hmm. and uh, why you picked that particular image. Mm -hmm. So start anywhere right. you want. Okay, okay. Um, well, that is part of um, an ongoing series called Anachronism um, using Dutch and Flemish influence and masterpieces who I've been influenced by my whole art career amongst many other painters, but especially Vermeer, who I'm, ju I'm just crazy about. Um, and I'm also a nostalgia buff, and I'm kind of the archivist of my family's old photos, and I have hundreds of 35 millimeter slides If people still know what a 35 millimeter slide is, those little square transparencies, um, you know, from my father's Instamatic camera from the 1960s. Um, and I'm just, I, I, I'm a photorealist painter. So, you know, obviously photography is, is my inspiration uh, for almost all my paintings. Uh, well, now pretty much all my paintings are photography based. Um, typically I like to use my own photography, but when I'm doing a series based on nostalgia, I will use old family album photos as well as stock photography from, from the internet as well. Um, so this particular image is my mother, who now, thank God, is still alive at uh, 86. She's not going to see this, so she won't know. I just told her age. Um, and my younger brother. She's holding my younger brother. I have two brothers. I'm the middle child. And so that one is my younger brother. And I was at a friend's birthday party in our apartment building. There were lots of kids, and we always went to different apartments for birthday parties. And this was one of those 35 millimeter slides that I hadn't seen in 40 years. Um, and I was at my friend's house and um, I guess it was his birthday party. So he had the slide um, that his father took. So this was not one that my own father took. Uh, this was my friend's father who took the photo. So my friend was just sharing these slides not really knowing that there was going to be one of my mother and my brother. And I have a photographic memory. So I, re I remember the party. I remember the setting of the apartment, which was a little different than the painting that you're looking at. Um, and I'm looking at this painting and the way my mother is looking at the window and the way the window is kind of showing a glimmer of light and my brother's kind of curious look into the camera as sort of, it's it's kind of a, a little conspiratorial glance into the camera to me, that's what it looks like. But I'm looking at this photo and I'm thinking, this is pure Vermeer. I mean, this this setup is totally Vermeer. And in the original photo, there wasn't a Vermeer on the back wall. Um, and there wasn't a bowl of fruit on the table. Um, yeah, I created all that for the painting. But I thought, what would it be like if I took the idea of old Renaissance genre paintings, which was paintings of everyday life um, back in the day? They call that genre painting. Um, but what if I used 1960s, 1950s, 1960s photography as a jumping off point, but but turn that into a classical kind of Renaissance mannerist painting. Would that work? Oh, it, um, would, it definitely would it, you know, would it would it um evoke memories in other people? Um, you know, people who have who are of a certain age and and have memories of growing up with a certain decor and that type of kind of old brownie photography, instamatic photography. Um, which had a particular look. Um, 
you know, the colors were different. This was before the four color printing process. So, you know, they, they were a little muted. Um, but what if I take that as an idea to actually paint as a, like an oil painting from the 1400s? Well, I use acrylic, but so this is an acrylic painting. But when I was in college at School of Visual Arts a hundred years ago, I took a course called Painting Techniques of the Old Masters but using acrylic. So it's all about layering with varnish and you do an underpainting and sepia and then that's built up little by little with very thin layers of acrylic, watered down acrylic paint. And before you go to the next layer, you put a layer of acrylic medium, which is like a, a varnish. And, and then you, you kind of start the painting again. So it's almost like three paintings on top of one painting. Um, I will typically start by projecting the slide right onto my canvas, which is at this point unstretched and tacked to a wall. And I'll do almost a blueprint drawing. Um, this is after I played with it in Photoshop, of course. So what, what I do is actually um, I, I convert the slide to, um, to a hard copy print. And um, I'm actually using Photoshop to kind of take away what's called a gray tone, the and kind of cartoonify it a bit um, because I'm I'm sort of a hard edge painter. I kind of like this very stylized, uh, very definitive shapes, and um, which is very different from Renaissance painting, but but it still evokes that sense of realism. Um, even though it's not, it's not typical photo, typical photo realism, which started in the 50s and 60s, their reason for being was really to make it look exactly like a photograph. Right. My form of realism, um, and I, years ago, I befriended Deborah Solomon, the art critic of the Times at the time, and I actually got the chance to paint her. Her two sons were, were students of mine. Um, at, at uh, Road of Shalom School. And um, she wanted paintings of them and I was taking commissions at that time. So she referred to me as a pop realist. And so that, that title kind of stuck. I kind of like that if you have to kind of categorize the style of your work, I would call myself a pop realist. And I, I do love the pop artists as well, but I really, um, Somewhere along the way, I've I've never been an abstract painter at all, but somewhere along the way, I my work got more and more photographic, and so photography became kind of my my raison d'être, my you know my purpose for <clears throat> excuse me for starting a painting. Listen, I think this piece is wonderful. I'm so glad that it's in the exhibit. And I recommend that everyone please visit cawct.org to see it, but also see more of Gary's work. I have the pleasure of seeing more of your work and it's a wonderful series. It's interesting, it's innovative, and it really does tell a very interesting story that almost becomes, like you said, a memory for the viewer. So Gary, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you, and thanks for your patience with the slight technical difficulties at first, and thanks for including me in the exhibition. I appreciate it.